Have you just turned 50 or are you partway through your 50s and you're wondering if it's worthwhile having a PSA test? You've heard in the media that most men die with rather than from prostate cancer and you're wondering whether or not you need to have the test in the first place. In this video, I'm going to share with you what actually is involved in a prostate check, more specifically a PSA test, what normal values are, what we do, um, if a PSA test is high, and what can cause the PSA test to be high or for the PSA test to be normal, really to equip you with everything that you need to know to make the right decision for you if a PSA test is appropriate. Hi, my name is Dr. Charles Schubert. I'm a urologist and director of the Prostate Clinic here on the Gold Coast in Australia. In my experience of having this discussion with men over the last 20 years, I want to equip you with some of the key pieces of information with regards to prostate cancer testing. As always, if you get value from this video, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. It really helps uh, the algorithm and helps us reach more men so that we can all learn about prostate health together. Okay, so what is this PSA test? In essence, it's a blood test. PSA stands for prostatic specific antigen. It is a protein that is made by the prostate and its normal role, its normal physiological role, basically is to liquefy ejaculation, ejaculatory fluid to increase the chance of conception. Small amounts of PSA can leach or leak into the bloodstream and it's the blood test to assess this level that gives us an idea of an man's risk of having prostate cancer. Now, one of the challenges that we have with the PSA test is it lacks specificity. And what that means in essence is that there are different conditions that affect the prostate that push the value up. So your PSA can go up, yes, if you have prostate cancer, but it can also go up in the context of men having an enlarged prostate or alternatively, if men have inflammation within the prostate. So this underpins one of the controversies with PSA testing. In a recent poll that I surveyed here on YouTube asking men if a PSA test only went up in the context of prostate cancer, whilst the majority of men said yes, they thought that was the case, a minority of men thought it was exclusively prostate cancer which pushed up the PSA test and that there was no other potential cause for that. And this is not the case. So one of the controversial points is the potential for a false positive, i.e. the PSA test can be up and a man doesn't have prostate cancer. The potential for this is that having a PSA test, and certainly this is one of the arguments historically for not having the PSA test, is that it can lead to a degree of stress and anxiety because of those men who have a higher value historically used to go down the pathway of having a biopsy to try and work out if they had prostate cancer or not. In contemporary practice, we do have the advent of MRI scans. And if you haven't seen our previous video, please have a look at our previous video talking in depth about the pros and cons of MRI scans for trying to uh, assess a man's prostate cancer risk. So now if someone has an elevated PSA, we do have the utility and the benefit of having a scan rather than requiring a biopsy. It's far more sensitive and it's far more specific than the blood test on its own. Now, who should have a PSA test? Should every man go and have a PSA test? Well, the data doesn't really support that. We know that with prostate cancer, it becomes more common as men progress through life. And current guidelines really are that screening should start from the age of 50 to around the age of 70. And that's the sweet spot, if you like, for trying to identify men that are likely to get the biggest benefit from having a PSA test. There is really good data these days. There's long-term international studies that say if you have a PSA test, you're less likely to be diagnosed with metastatic prostate cancer, which is cancer that's already spread and left the prostate, and you're far less likely to die from prostate cancer. So if men are interested in their overall health and well-being, if they're proactive about things between the ages of 50 and 70, 
please go and have a PSA test or at least go and talk to your local doctor about the benefit, the pros and cons of having a test. Now, if you were at higher risk of having prostate cancer, so that does include men who are of African-American descent, for example, or in those men that have a strong family history of prostate cancer, they do have a higher risk of developing the disease at some stage in their life. So current guidelines are that if men are in their 40s, and they're in a high risk category, they should have a PSA test to try and work out where their risk is. Now, it's important to be aware of numbers, meaning a normal PSA now is defined as less than three. The median for a PSA, so the most common value of a PSA when a man is in his 40s is 0.6. And it's the man's relationship to the median that can be used as a guide to determine frequency of PSA testing and whether the next step of an MRI scan needs to be undertaken. <clears throat> there is a bit of a push more recently for men to consider having a PSA test when they're in their 40s. And the argument behind this is when you're in your 40s, you're less likely to have BPH, which is the benign enlargement to the prostate. And that is, as I highlighted, one of the reasons why a PSA test can be increased. So if you have a PSA test when you're in your 40s, you're less likely to have the enlargement and the PSA that you have in your 40s is more likely to represent your lifetime, your true lifetime risk of having prostate cancer. And some of the information that we know is approximately 75% of men who in their lifetime develop significant prostate cancer will have a PSA above the median, i.e. above six when they're in their 40s. The median value when you're in your 50s, for reference, is 0 0.9, and when you're in your 60s, is 1.2. So when you're discussing this with your local doctor, an important conversation is, what is your risk? What's your risk of having prostate cancer? Are you in a lower risk category because you don't fulfill those higher risk criteria, i.e. no family history, not of African-American descent? Do you have urinary symptoms? And where does your risk place? And certainly discuss with your doctor the pros and cons of having a test. I often say to men that it's pointless having a PSA test if that is the only aspect that you're going to be proactive about your health care with. And certainly if men, for example, uh, carry uh, excess weight, they've got metabolic syndrome, they might smoke, they might drink excessively. In, in that context, the risks of having the sequelae, the follow-on effects from metabolic syndrome and the potential for coronary artery disease uh, far exceed the potential for a prostate cancer diagnosis. And I recommend two men to be holistic in their approach and not just to pick and choose. So the PSA test, it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. It does fluctuate. It does go up for other reasons beyond just prostate cancer. But it's really important to have that conversation with your healthcare provider, with your local doctor, to understand your risk and have an informed decision about whether or not the PSA test might be important and appropriate for you. Please, if you get benefit from the video, as always, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel. If you want to know more about aspects related to prostate health and prostate treatments, have a look at this video and perhaps have a look at this video as well. Until the next time, please take care of your prostate.